1859, uh, Charles Darwin uh, published his elegant theory of evolution by natural selection. And what Darwin proposed was that uh, he noticed that there was variation in all species of animals. And he also knew that there was not enough food for all organisms that were born to survive and reproduce. And he reasoned then that the organisms whose chance variation gave them an edge in the struggle to survive would, in, in fact, outcompete their siblings and survive and, and leave offspring. And if the, uh, the variation could be inherited, then perhaps over time, the characteristics of the species would change. And perhaps over great periods of time, great changes could occur. So Darwin had hit upon uh, something that nobody thought could be done, a simple, elegant mechanism uh, of evolution. But even in the uh, 19th century, a number of scientists thought that there were uh, structures in nature which might not be able to be explained by this theory. And in one in particular was the eye. And when it's noticed that the eye is a complex structure uh, composed of the retina and the lens and ocular muscles and uh, needed tear ducts. And, and it, if any of these structures were missing, then the uh, person or, or animal would be, their vision would be severely compromised or it might be outright blind. Well, Charles, Charles Darwin knew about the eye, too. And he dealt with the eye in a section of the origin of species called um, Organs of Extreme Perfection and Complication. And Darwin said, essentially, well, he didn't know how the eye might have evolved. But, he said, if you look at various eyes in current organisms in nature, you might begin to be able to see how such a transformation might occur. And he said, some simple organisms have a very simple um, light-sensitive structure. Here are some light-sensitive cells surrounded by pigment cells. In such a structure, <coughs> it hardly could be said to be an eye, light coming from any direction could set off the light-sensitive cells. So the organism could sense light and dark, but it can't really sense which direction the light is coming from. However, if you take this light-sensitive spot and put it in a little cup, as is seen in, in other organisms, then light coming from one direction will cast a shadow on the retina. And so this might give the animal a sense of direction uh, of, uh, from which the light is coming. And if you deepen the cup and start to fill it with a gelatinous material, then that's the beginnings of a crude lens. And so Darwin argued that you, there might be a pathway, an evolutionary pathway, from something like a simple light-sensitive spot all the way up to the complicated eye of vertebrates. And his argument persuaded many of his contemporaries and uh, really carried the day. But where did the light-sensitive spot come from? Darwin didn't know. And as a matter of fact, in the origin, he specifically declined to address that question. He wrote, how a nerve comes to be sensitive to light hardly concerns us more than how life itself originated. <laughs> well, in, in modern science has become interested in both of these questions. But Darwin was right. He was right to not even try to answer this question because the science of the 19th century didn't have the tools to even to begin to investigate it. To give you an idea, uh, in Darwin's time, atoms and molecules were theoretical entities. Nobody knew if such things actually existed. The cell was thought to be a little piece of undifferentiated protoplasm, kind of like a little piece of microscopic jello. And uh, many people thought that the cell was a very simple uh, apparatus. And in fact, it was what I, I term a black box. And of course, a black box means a system or a uh, machine that does something, but you don't know how it works. Let's return to uh, Darwin's question of how a nerve becomes sensitive to light. What makes a cell able to detect light? 
and, uh, and see what progress science has made in the past uh, 100 years or so. When a photon first hits your retina, it interacts with a molecule called 11 cisretinal. That's kind of in a bent shape like this, in an L. And when the photon is absorbed, it straightens out. And that's the first uh, event in a long pathway of uh, events that proceed on to vision. This is uh, much of the rest of the pathway. <laughs> Uh, this is not to the same scale as the last figure. The retinal probably occupies about a third the length of this oval. The retinal is bound to a, a protein called rhodopsin. Here is designated RH. It's supposed to be this oval. And the change in the shape of the retinal forces a change in the shape of the protein rhodopsin to which it's bound. When the rhodopsin changes shape, it acquires the ability to interact with a protein called transducin. Previously, transducin had bound a small organic molecule called GDP, but when uh, rhodopsin binds, it, the GDP falls off and a related molecule called GTP binds. When that happens, the com complex of rhodopsin, transducin, GTP acquires the ability to interact with phosphodiesterase, uh, this little circle here. When it does that, the phosphodiesterase, the shape of the phosphodiesterase is changed so that it now starts to chemically cut a molecule called cyclic GMP, turning it into 5' prime GMP. Now, there's a lot of cyclic GMP in the cell, and some interacts uh, with this, and some interacts with another protein called an ion channel. But when this, the, uh, the ion channel allows sodium ions from the outside into the inside of the cell. When the phosphodiesterase starts to cleave the uh, cyclic GMP, it lowers the concentration of it and that causes the cyclic GMP on the ion channel to fall off. When that happens, the ion channel closes down. The concentration of sodium in the cell changes. That changes the voltage across the, uh, the uh, membrane, and that eventually causes a current to be sent down the optical nerve to the brain. And when interpreted by the brain, that is vision. So this is the simple light sensitive spot that uh, Darwin started his, uh, his uh, speculation in the origin with. Now, believe me, this is just a sketch of the chemistry of vision. There, it goes into a lot more detail than that. Uh, for example, the system that returns the state to its original uh, position and restores retinal to its correct conformation and, and so on. So this looks very complicated. But can it be explained by Darwin's theory? Um, it turns out that Darwin himself gave us a criterion by which we could judge whether something is explainable by, by his theory of natural selection. In The Origin, he wrote, if it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed which could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down. Well, okay, what kind of a system could not be formed by numerous successive slight modifications? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, for starters, one that is what I call irreducibly complex or has the property of irreducible complexity. An irreducibly complex system like this is, is a big challenge to Darwinian evolution because, um, excuse me, the, uh, because natural selection needs a function to select. And for irreducibly complex systems, the function does not appear until the system is, is intact. But are there any irreducibly complex biochemical systems, cells or systems in the cell? Yes, it, it turns out the cell is loaded with such things. 